On behalf of the Skyfaring Commission, allow me to welcome you to Starskiff Haven. On the Sienjo Lofu, anything relating to aviation, navigation, and trade falls within the scope of the Skyfaring Commission, which is one of the six commissions of the Lofu. As the biggest port on the ship, Starskiff Haven is governed by the Skyfaring Commission, too. You definitely sound like a... Uh, what was it again? Oh, Amy Cassiter! By which I mean, nice speech! That's too kind of you. My job involves ferrying business delegates to and from Starskiff Haven, so I do this kind of introduction all the time. Anyway, we're safe now. Normally I'd be a good host and take you around, but these are difficult times. Let's head to the Palace of Astrum first, and report your arrival to Madame Yukon. Palace of Astrum? Right there, the tallest building in the city. It's also the headquarters of the Skyfaring Commission. Let's hurry, we haven't got much time. I don't mean to rush you, but if Madame Yukong holds me accountable for not getting you over soon enough, I wouldn't want to be around for the consequences. Sounds scary. I thought you said she was kind-hearted. We need to make a few preparations before paying a visit to any of the six commissions. Rest assured, Miss Tingyun, we won't go anywhere. If you can inform Madame Yukong of our arrival first, we'll meet you at the palace entrance later. Very well. <laughs> Little Miss Fox moves at quite the pace. I can't keep up with her. Uh, I've spent too long on the bench. Let's catch our breath for a while, huh? We can expect a packed schedule ahead. That might be a little harsh, but she does put her own interests first. She did the right thing by not trusting us initially. We were an unknown quantity to her. As for the rush, uh, my guess is she's just eager to get us out of her hair and further up the chain. It'll be all right. We're not trying to stand in her way. We have nothing to hide from her. <laughs> we didn't have anything to hide in Bellabog either. Not so fast. I need to give you two a heads up first. Our meeting with Madame Yukon won't be without risk. We need to be prepared and take it seriously. She is a top Sienjo leader. Oh, Mr. Yang, do you think this could be Bellabog all over again? No, the Sienjo Alliance is better than that. But Madame Yukong will definitely have a string of difficult questions for us. Why did we choose to come to the Sienjo now? How did we know that the incident is related to Estelaron? Who leaked their information to us? Careless answers mean distrust and potential hostility, which would make things much harder for us. Ah, oh, crud. One of us is gonna blurt something out, or get something wrong, I just know it. Ah, <sighs> see? Don't worry. We'll find a way through. Let me do the talking.
We need a strategy. Move carefully. Do you know who I am? This big diamond! It's all yours! Lance at the ready. Too late to repent. I'm on guard. Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life in this sanctuary is but a vision. Break! What are you looking at? No interest in conflict. Lance at the ready. What's in your prescription? Don't worry about me. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! I'm on guard. Honored to meet me. Reach the end of the story in your own way. We need a strategy. Will of preservation! This will strengthen our position. <sighs> Lance ablaze! Lance! Forward! <sighs> Move carefully. <laughs> What's in your prescription? Don't worry about me. <laughs> the truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Don't worry Lance about me. Lance at the ready. <laughs> Do you know who I am? This big diamond! It's all yours! Time to twirl! You bully! 
fighting is meaningless. Nice teamwork. <laughs> Tom, what's in your prescription? I've no interest in conflict. <laughs> the truth of life and death with the sanctuary is but a vision. Right. The redemption. <laughs> what are you looking at? Lance at the ready. Lance ablaze. Lance forward. You bully. I've lost my way. Past victories don't guarantee future ones. That enemy certainly isn't friendly. Judgment is here. Move carefully. For your sins. You've got a lot of nerve. Help me! I'm on guard. Let me tend your wounds. Much obliged. I've no interest in conflict. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break. Nice teamwork. 
fighting is meaningless. I have something for you. Ha! The redemption. <laughs> Execute the tyrant. Tuck what's in your prescription. Nice teamwork. <laughs> Lance ablaze. Lance forward. You won't get away. <laughs> Perhaps you still humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Judgment is here! of life in the sanctuary is but a vision! Break. Lance at the ready! <laughs> Fighting is meaningless. Let me turn your wound! <laughs> you bully! There we go! Perhaps you still- Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Interesting conflict. Retribution! <laughs> Execute the judgment! <laughs> the truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! You won't get away. <laughs> Tuck what's in your prescription! Don't worry about me. You don't look so good. <laughs> I have something for you. <laughs> Lance at the ready. <laughs> Fighting is meaningless. I've lost my way. <sighs> Past victories don't guarantee future ones. stolen parts again? How am I going to track down this crook? Oh, it's you! There have been a few unusual thefts in the dwelling over the past few days. The vagrants say that the parts they worked so hard to obtain have completely vanished. They're worried that there's a thief in the dwelling. Despite our investigations, no one has been able to track down the thief. What's even stranger is that the thief appears to be only interested in stealing parts and doesn't care about other valuable items. The vagrants had no choice but to ask Mr. Svarov to look into it, but he still hasn't found anything. I investigated the matter myself, but I came up empty-handed. Jeez, I'm baffled. What a strange thief.
Are you also here to look into this case? Perhaps if we work together, we can uncover some clues that I missed. Oh, I heard the vagrants on patrol last night ran across the thief again, but I haven't had time to look into it. Should we go ask them? That sounds kind of weird. But actually, I think it's cool too. <laughs> now, let's get started. saw the thief who stole the parts last night. Can you tell us what happened? Ah! Who, who's there? Oh, Clara, it's you. I thought it was... You scared the living daylights out of me. I... I did see the thief last night, but who is this person next to you? Nickname is a bit embarrassing. D Detective! I see. You're here to help catch the thief, right? It's great that there are more people here to solve this case. Hold on, I'll explain what happened last night. Just let me gather my thoughts first. Oh, okay, so last night. I was on patrol when I bumped into the thief stealing the parts. Then, then, I, I just... Goodness! Okay, I'll explain slowly. I was cold and hungry while on patrol last night, so I decided to return to the dwelling and heat up some leftover canned food for a snack. When I entered the tent, the thief's silhouette scurried across my vision! I couldn't see the thief's face because the tent was so dark, but I could tell he wasn't a nice guy. Be because when he turned to flee, he swung a knife right across my face! In that moment, I really thought I was going to die! I could feel the blades chill on my cheeks and smell its rusty scent. The weapon that fella had was definitely a metal one. That's the only thing I'm certain of. Also, I saw the outline of him in the dark. The fella's head was absolutely square. Yes, you heard me, square. Can you believe that? Someone with a square head? It was truly terrifying! It sounds bizarre, but it could be a clue. I'll jot it down. Sir, please take a deep breath. So, the thief was armed with a metal weapon and had a... Um... Square head, correct? Yes, that's correct. Hmm, I'm struggling to make sense of these clues. Do you have any thoughts? I'm sorry, I was too scared. When a shadow leaps out at you, who could possibly pay attention to such tiny details? It seems that's everything. We now know one of the culprit's physical traits, and that he is extremely violent. But how can we track him down? Ah, uh, yes! I remember something! While the culprit was hurrying to escape, he knocked something over! He may have left some clues or something. This is a crucial clue. Let's go investigate the crime scene together. I think he ran that way. No one has touched the crime scene, so any traces he left behind should still be there. Please, catch the thief for us.
take a look at these marks. These are very suspicious. Uh, could they have been left by the culprit? They point in that direction. Let's go take a look. They don't appear to have been left by a human. Past victories don't guarantee future ones. The tracks stop here. I guess we'll have to look around for other clues. This is where the mechanical waste is disposed of, though. Could it be...? actually likes waste heaps. He probably uses them as a hiding spot. Oh, maybe he hid the stolen parts here too. Let's split up. Wait, what's that noise? It's a tiny robot? Is it searching for something? But I don't remember Mr. Svarog issuing an order like this recently. It looks like it's carrying the vagrant's missing parts. And those tracks and metal scratches we noticed earlier. Hmm, that would be quite strange. Yet, such a scenario can't be ruled out. This small robot doesn't appear to be a Bellabob creation. It looks like it's been welded together from random scrap metal materials. Oh, huh. it appears to have a small mechanical arm. Ah, it's noticed us! I... human... injured... no... hurt... Please don't! I... I don't understand what it's saying, but it doesn't appear to be trying to flee or attack us. It appears to be trying to say something. I... human... please... don't hurt. Is it trying to say... Please don't hurt me, humans. Human... Parts... Rivet... Need... Repair... Need... Town... Parts... Need... 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 Hurt... Don't... It appears to have a malfunction, but I think I can understand it. It seems that it needs these parts, and it's begging us not to hurt it. I... I've never seen a robot with this kind of malfunction before. What happened to it? Although the small robot appears to want to communicate, its speech is all scrambled. Perhaps there's an issue with its language module. This little guy probably can't understand what we're saying either. Run! Escape! Open! Fire! Workshop! Chase! Do! 
don't! Uh, it's running away! No, we can't let it escape. It still has the Vagrant's parts. What should we do? We gotta stop it. But please don't be too rough on it. I'll figure out a way to repair it later. Hurt. Pain. No, hurt. Don't. Pain. Suffer. Sorry. Hurt. Sorry. I've no interest in conflict. stopped working. Yes, but why? I feel bad about this. I guess we should return this little fella and the parts. I think I can... I'll repair it. And if I can't, I'll ask Mr. Sparrow for help. He always knows what to do. Initiating assessment of the robot's condition. Please wait, Clara. While Mr. Sparrow is assessing this little fella, let's give it a quick checkup ourselves. Hmm? This paint job and these custom parts, and the way the parts are attached, it's all quite strange. But one thing is for certain, this little fella is not under remote control. He's operating entirely of his own accord. Its design is, well, unique. I've never seen a robot with a design like this before. It really seems like something that was thrown together rather quickly. Its creator most likely didn't consider whether the system would function properly or not. Is it a failed robot pet creation that has been abandoned? But if it's a pet, then why would it gather parts itself? I've heard that some vagrants in the dwelling keep the little robots they find as pets. Some vagrants also make modifications to their pets, which they call pet upgrades. Pets like that are pretty rare, but some of the folks who have them have formed a small community to share ideas. Some are interested in nurturing robots, others force them into battle. If my memory serves me right, the parts this little fella stole were originally designed for that kind of pet upgrade. The vagrants, or to be more accurate, the majority of the people in the underworld, regard robots as nothing more than tools. But I disagree. Robots have their own thoughts and feelings. It's great that you understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I just suddenly felt some strong emotions. Let's get back to work on repairing the small robot. This Jack's placement is... odd. The chip is buried deep inside. If you don't look closely enough, you won't even find it. Assessment of the robot's condition is complete. The shell damage is estimated to be 98.2%. The assessment concludes that a total recovery is impossible. It is recommended that the robot's external shell be removed and replaced. 
while keeping the outer circuitry and related transmission devices. You can always rely on Mr. Svarog to come up with a brilliant idea. So, I guess we'll have to go find a new robot shell to fix it, right? Please don't use violent methods to solve this issue. There are other options. There must be some robot shells lying around the machine graveyard. Everyone calls it a graveyard, but there are actually lots of useful parts buried there. I'm going to return the parts to the vagrants first, then I'll check on the little fella. Can I trust you to find a shell in the machine graveyard, big sister? Please, please don't say things like that. You'll upset me. Then, I'll entrust this task to you, big sister. Look for Toby at the front entrance. His appearance is... crude, but he is the robot most familiar with the machine graveyard. Just follow Toby. Hello, guests of Miss Clara. Please do as you wish. It's my honor to serve you. Allow me to share a fun fact. Toby is not a primitive robot. Miss Clara has assigned me the task of planning your sightseeing route in the machine graveyard. I will guide you down the path. Would you like to engage in super speed mode? If so, please confirm by spinning counterclockwise 10 times, then clockwise by 270 degrees. Past victories don't guarantee future wins. We have arrived at our first destination. This model is known as the Dire Wolf, and was scrapped after it sustained piercing damage during a battle with another robot pet, which caused the chainsaw's fuel tank to burst. Robot pet battles sound a little frightening. The inside of the armor is a total mess due to being melted by the heat. Unfortunately, it appears to be useless. We are on our way to the second destination. Please take a seat, buckle up, and hold tight. Caution! You have exceeded the speed limit. Please obey Bellabog traffic laws. On the road, safety is the top priority.
past victories don't guarantee future ones. at our second destination. This module is called the Beetle, which is the same as mine. This machine was scrapped because it accelerated erratically for 7.1 kilometers after it incorrectly interpreted a command, causing the engine to catch fire and the core module to melt down. That is such an odd reason to be scrapped. However, the shell appears to be in good condition, so I'll bring it with me. Your trip has concluded. Please keep an eye out for vehicles approaching from the back or sides, as well as enemies and automatons. Your trip has concluded. I appreciate you putting your trust in Toby. A five-star review for this trip has been automatically generated for you. You're welcome. Clara, it's time for a break. You shouldn't repair machines when you have negative emotions. It's bad for your physical and mental health. Don't worry, Mr. Svarag. I'm fine. Oh, you're back already. How did it go? Did Toby help you find a shell? This shell... Hmm... It doesn't appear to be the same design as this little fella's. But it shouldn't matter. The structures of these small robots are nearly identical. Thank you for bringing this to me. I finished extracting that chip from the small robot. Now, all that's left to do is move all this circuitry into the new shell. Although its appearance has changed a lot, I think we did a good job. Hmm... But what I just did... Is it any different from those pet upgrades that the Vagrants performed? Not... Compatible! In... Compatible! Huh? It's making a strange sound! Incompatible! In... What's going on? Is it malfunctioning? Incompatible. Incom... Incompatible. 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 Risk level high. Clara, get away now. Big sister, watch out! It's out of control! Incompatible. 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 Compatibility issue? Troubleshooting. Assessment. The system on the chip and the new hardware are incompatible, causing the robot to behave erratically. 
The current issue has been resolved. Risk level, low. Alert, lifted. It appears to have adjusted to its new shell after the battle. That's great! But, I'd like to keep a closer eye on it for a while. Compatibility tests should take a few days. Hopefully, it'll be all back to normal by then. I'm also curious about where this little fella came from. Could you please come back later, big sister? I need to look into something. I may require your assistance. Thank you, big sister. I'll text you when this little fella is fixed. Mr. Sparrow, I'd like to give this little fella a name. Any ideas for a good name? Accessing name database. Search results. Abby. Abigail. Ada. Addison. I should come back to Clara later. <laughs>